You've probably heard about the high standards that actuarial employers have for actuarial candidates. But for some of you, that might make you a little bit worried or concerned that maybe something about your specific situation or your specific circumstances is going to make it difficult or maybe even impossible to get an actuarial job. Essentially, something that's going to kill your actuarial career, an actuarial career killer. And it's true, if you're relying on just one of these factors in order to get an actuarial job, then any of these actuarial career killers could literally make it impossible possible for you to get into an actuarial role. But the truth is that you shouldn't and really you can't rely on just one factor in order to break into the actuarial field. There are three actuarial career killers that I hear of most commonly from future actuaries. One of them is a low GPA, usually below a 3.0. Another one is starting the career late, usually two or more years after graduation. A third one is not having an actuarial internship or any related experience. And a fourth one is not having a degree in actuarial science. So basically having a degree in a non-actuarial field. By the end of this video, you're going to know what you can do to make sure that any of these actuarial career killers don't actually kill your chances of getting an actuarial job. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator Community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial dream job. So now let's get into this. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this. It would be the ideal situation if you were someone with a 4.0 GPA, an actuarial internship, also someone with an actuarial science degree, someone that's going to graduate in the next few months. Plus on top of that, it would be ideal if you've passed multiple exams, you have great technical skills and communication skills. But the thing is, although this type of candidate might be the ideal situation for most actuarial employers, it's just not very realistic. There are very few, if any, candidates that actually meet all of these requirements. Requirements. But that's really good news for you because it means that you don't have to meet all those requirements either. That means that if you are in one of those less than ideal situations, then you are not doomed. It doesn't have to kill your actuarial career or your chances at getting an actuarial job. Here's the thing. Everything that really matters in order to become an actuary is stuff that you have complete control over for your future. You might not be able to control things from your past, like a low GPA or not having an internship or starting out on this journey late, but you can decide what you become and what you do in the future. So that's where becoming a top actuarial candidate comes in. A top actuarial candidate is someone with a bachelor's degree, which is something you can definitely go ahead and get if you don't have it already. It's someone with great technical skills. These are things that you can learn no matter what stage of your life you're in. It's someone that has great communication skills. Now there's always room for improvement on this area, but it's something that you can constantly be learning throughout your entire life. It's someone that has multiple exams passed, and yes, you can definitely go ahead and pass actuarial exams, just don't do them right away. And it's someone with related experience, and that's something you can also go out and fairly easily earn within the next six months. Now, a top actuarial candidate is someone that has usually multiple job offers because they are so well qualified. They know what they are worth in the actuarial industry. They are someone that knows exactly what they want in the company that they work for, so they're able to decide which companies they work for. They often start with a higher starting salary and they end up having a faster salary increase throughout their career. So this is really where you want to be if you want to break into the actuarial field. But notice my description of a top candidate. Nowhere in there did I say that you had to have a super high GPA. I didn't say that you needed an actuarial internship. I didn't say that you had to have an actuarial science degree or that you still had to be in school. These aren't factors that define a top candidate. They're more like icing on the cake. And if you need even more proof than that, well, I was a top actuarial candidate when I got my first job and that allowed me to get a job despite having a low GPA that was around a 2.3. There's Emma who I've interviewed on this channel before. She got an actuarial job without having an internship and she was a top actuarial candidate. There's also Denise who was a top actuarial candidate when she got her first job. She ended up getting her job even though she was starting her actuarial journey many years after graduation. And then there's Dean who got an actuarial job as a top candidate without an actuarial actuarial science degree. You see, becoming a top actuarial candidate is how you overcome personal situations that might appear to be career killers or less than ideal situations. Now, I'm not saying that all companies are going to be willing to hire someone that doesn't meet certain requirements like a GPA that's above 3.2, for example. It happens. There are companies out there that set a bar and they're not willing to negotiate from there or allow any exceptions. But there are also companies out there that look at candidates from a more holistic view. They consider the pros and the cons overall and they don't put specific emphasis on one particular metric like a GPA. In my opinion it's not fair to judge a candidate entirely on one factor when there are
there are so many other things to take into consideration that are going to be able to better determine how they'll be able to perform on the job. But it is what it is and that's what happens sometimes. So we just have to deal with those circumstances. But the point here is that once you become a top actuarial candidate, you'll just have to go and find those companies that aren't rating their candidates based on one or two specific metrics. You'll have to find companies that look at all the factors rather than just a few. Things like GPA and years out of college and your degree, they don't actually dictate how well you're going to be able to do on the job anyway or what you're capable of. So really it's their loss if that's how they decide to assess candidates. Okay, so now you know the top four career killers. And yes, it's true. If you are relying on any one of these factors alone in order to get into an actuarial job, then they probably are going to kill your chances of getting an actuarial job. But hopefully this video has shown you that it doesn't have to be the case. Also, you now know that if you do become a top candidate, you're going to be able to overcome, fix, or make up for the fact that maybe you're not the absolute most perfect candidate out there, but you'll still have tons of opportunities that'll open up your way once you reach that level of candidate. Becoming a top actuarial candidate isn't something that happens easily. There are certain steps that you have to take to get there. And if you do those steps in the right order, it is something that can happen within less than a year. So if you want to know how to do that, then make sure you go watch this video next. And that's all for this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.